Now at 5 and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, police connecting two bodies found in a home to a series of shootings in two Texas cities. Plus, the fighting between Hamas and Israeli troops continues in southern Gaza, disrupting aid and pushing Palestinians out of safety. And a flash fire in Port Arthur sent several people to the hospital. Our weather is looking pretty good for two more days. Yes, we've got high pressure on top of us. We'll be in the 70s, but it's uh, Friday, rather Saturday when the next cold front blows in. We'll be talking about that coming up. A shooting took place at a university in Nevada. Police say multiple people were hurt. We have the latest on the shooting this afternoon. You're watching 25 News Now at 5. Good afternoon and thanks for being with us. I'm Karina Garcia. Just before 7 p.m. Tuesday, Edna police were called to the Cottonwood Apartments where they found a dead teenager. The DPS and Texas Rangers are investigating the death as a capital murder case. Family members of the victim say she was Elizabeth Medina. The Cottonwood Apartments are in the 1400 block of North Well Street near State Highway 111 and Highway 59. If you have any information, call the Edna Police Department. Family members plan a vigil Saturday night at the Edna Cowboy Stadium in Edna at 6 p.m. Elizabeth Medina was a cheerleader at the high. A Victoria man died last night in a motorcycle crash. It happened around 6 p.m. on Port Lavaca Drive. Police say the driver of a truck was going northbound in the 100 block of North Brownson Street when he failed to yield the right of way. He crashed into a 19 year old on a motorcycle. Motorcycle Bo Meyer was riding eastbound in the 1600 block of Port Lavaca Drive. He was taken to the hospital where he later died. The driver of the truck was not hurt. Now, just before 9 a.m., Victoria police were in the 3500 block of North Navarro for this crash. Traffic was detoured for a time starting at Mistletoe and Navarro to the Crestwood intersection. Both vehicles were towed away, but no word if anyone was hurt. Now, six people are trying to fill the seat of mayor of Victoria. Over the next few weeks, we will introduce you to some of the candidates. And today we have Josephine Solis in studio. So let's go to 25 News Now anchor Don Brubaker for that story. Thank you, Karina. And thank you, Councilwoman for Solis, for being here today. You're welcome. I know a lot of viewers want to know this first. What in your past work history and experience makes you the most qualified candidate for mayor? You've been a city councilman in Victoria, city council member in Victoria for over a decade. Yes, I have. I started in 2012 and I'm on the last leg of my fourth term. What have you learned about the inner workings of the city of Victoria that has made you really want to be the mayor of Victoria? I want to continue the work that we've been doing together, all the projects, the CIPs, and, you know, uh, and in working with everybody on the council, we have a cohesive council right now, and we work together, we discuss, we talk, and we, you know, exchange our views, and, you know, we, we all have our say, and we feel comfortable, and it's, it's very nice, it's very good to have that type of, you know, commitment with everybody and it's good. How much will it still be comfortable if you were elected mayor and you still had those same city council people there working together? I think the cohesiveness will still be there even though you know I think somebody would have to run for my position and then you know for Dwayne's and for, so we both have that behind you know we know that mm -hmm. so we'll see how that turns out. After you found out about uh, the fact that Mayor Balknight was running for a state representative, how fast did you decide, I want to run for mayor? Like right away. Really? <laughs> yes. Really? I feel like, okay, everybody says, but weren't you going to retire? I said, yeah, I had been saying that I wasn't going to run, but it's one year and it's to finish this term. And I would like to represent Victoria in the bicentennial coming up. And, you know, what more than a, a female Hispanic? you know, to follow in, you know, Patricia de Leon's steps because she was a pioneer in getting, you know, the women out there and she did a lot for the city. What are the city's biggest problems? <sighs> I guess it's because people don't understand that when we're going to do a street, we don't just go in there and start at the top. You got to do all the bottom part, the sewer lines, the water lines, and then do the street on top. And that takes several years. So people are always saying, well, the city's not doing enough for, you know, my street or, you know, things like that. Well, it's because they don't understand the process and that's what takes so long 
It might take us three years to do a street. We're doing North Street, and we have it projected for three years because we have to do it in sections. You know, it's a big street. They want it done yesterday, but it's right. a project of right. years, mm -hmm. not, yes, not weeks. No. Mm -mm. And uh, you, you today were interviewing people for the uh, new chief of the fire department, is that Yes, right? we are. Yes, we are. Today we're going to get to interview those uh, candidates. I don't know if it's three or four. I know it was four at one time, but I think it's three now. They whittled it down to three. So we're excited about that, too, to fill that position. You're a busy person. We thank you for your time today. Thank, thank you so you. much. All right, and Karina, back to you. Don Josephine, thank you for that. Now here's a look at the other five candidates, Duane Crocker, Carissa Winters, Peter Brown, Robert Constantine, and Jacob Salceda. You can learn more about these candidates at CrossroadsToday.com. And now the deadline to register to vote in the February 3rd mayoral special election is Tuesday, January 4th of 2024. So here is your viewer poll this afternoon. You can scan that QR code on your screen to vote now. The question is, are you registered to vote in the February 3rd mayoral special election? Yes or no? We want to hear from you, of course. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part, and we're going to have an update on 25 News Now at 6. Now, the interim chief of the Victoria Fire Department has filed to run for Victoria County Commissioner in Precinct 3. Shannon Martin started with the Victoria Fire Department back in 1987, and he retires at the end of January. He says he's lived in Precinct 3 his entire life and wants to help residents solve any issues in that area. And company Gary Burns is not seeking re-election, and this primary election is set for March 5th. And with that, let's take a look at your forecast with Chief Meteorologist Mac Perez. Max, looking pretty good out there. Yeah, it was another spectacular day. That big old ridge of high pressure uh, in the center part of the country is giving us the very nice weather. It's keeping all the storms at bay, but only for two more days because that storm on the west coast is finally going to make it through here and bring us back to the chilly weather. And we'll talk about that coming up in just a moment. Stay tuned. Mac, thank you. Israeli forces are battling Hamas militants across Gaza in intense fighting, preventing the distribution of vital aid across the territory. The fighting into the second largest city has further shrunk the area where Palestinians can flee, further pushing people toward the sealed off border with Egypt. On the Gaza side of the border, makeshift shelters and family homes are already overflowing, with many sleeping in the streets. Police say shooting suspect was found dead on the University of Nevada Las Vegas campus amid multiple reports of victims. In a social media post today, the university said police officers responded to a quote confirmed unquote active shooter in a building on the campus. At least three people were confirmed to have been shot. The university said the shooter was at the Beam Hall Frank and Estelle building, home of UNLV's Lee Business School, and that police had responded to a report of additional shots fired at the nearby student union. And across Texas, four people are dead and two officers were hurt after a shooting spree in Austin. Police say it started Tuesday morning when a police sergeant reported that he was shot in the leg. Nearly an hour later, a gunman shot and killed a man and a woman. Later that evening, police say two more people were found dead inside a home of apparent gunshot wounds. Police say an officer responding to the scene was shot multiple times. The Austin Police Department is investigating a series of violent incidents that began this morning and extended into the evening. Based on information obtained over the course of these investigations, we strongly believe one suspect is responsible for all of the incidents. The suspect is in custody and no longer poses a threat to our Austin community. This man was identified as the suspect in the shooting sprees. 34-year-old Shane James was taken into custody and charged with capital murder. He may be linked to the murders of two people found near a home in Bear County, though the motive is still unclear and under investigation. Now, James is also a suspect in the shooting of an Austin ISD police near Northeast Early College High School Tuesday morning. KVUE reports the officer who was shot in the leg was said to be released from the hospital late Later on Tuesday afternoon, classes and all after school activities at that high school were canceled for Wednesday.
Now, at least six people were hurt in a flash fire Tuesday afternoon. The flash fire happened shortly before 4 p.m. when the welders were working on a pipeline in Port Arthur. Four people were sent to the Medical Center of Southeast Texas, and two people were taken to the Burn Center in Galveston for treatment. The Port Arthur Fire Department and City Ambulance responded to the scene with about four different ambulances. No further information has been released as of latest. Here are some of the top headlines you can read in the Port Lavaca Wave. The Calhoun County Commissioner's Court named EMS Director Dustin Jenkins to be the general contractor for construction of a new first responder training facility. Plus, the Harbor Children's Alliance and Victim Center collected presents and donations for a Christmas party and toy giveaway for children. You can read these stories and more at theportlavacawave.com. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click that notification bell. And stay with us straight ahead on 25 News Now at 5. Former House Speaker made a big announcement today, creating big changes in the Republican Party. Also ahead, an artist in the Dallas-Fort Worth area is turning dead trees into works of art. The details up ahead. Former House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is resigning. In a Wall Street Journal op-ed today, the California Republican announced he is resigning from Congress at the end of the year. In January, he battled through 15 rounds to win the Speaker's gavel. And in a historic move, he was removed after working with Democrats on a stopgap spending bill. McCarthy says he plans to stay involved with Republican politics. However, his decision to leave further tightens Republicans' narrow majority in the House. Over the next few weeks, it might be hard to get back in the healthy track after the holidays, of course. And now while experts say it's okay to enjoy the holidays in moderation, don't let this season derail your healthy habits. It's a season of joy, but also holiday goodies, gatherings, and many times overindulgence. People sort of fall off the wagon, as, as most people would say, um, when it comes to their diet, um, sleep, and exercise in particular. When you get off a healthy track, it can be hard to hop back on. But there's one thing that can help, says Dr. Barbara Bauer with the Ohio State's Wexner Medical Center. Just say no. That's sort of my slogan. Bauer says to enjoy the holidays in moderation, but avoid excess food and alcohol. I think sometimes we get pressured to eat or, or, or maybe drink things with family members or friends, but again, okay to say no. Say yes to exercise. Continue being active this holiday season. Try to eat healthy throughout the day, especially before a gathering when you might indulge in a favorite treat. Next, Focus on getting good quality sleep. They go to sleep late, they wake up early, or uh, a combination of those factors. You throw in some alcohol, maybe more alcohol than they typically consume. That can alter your sleep too. Finally, Bauer says to lighten your holiday schedule. You don't need to go to every gathering or run yourself ragged trying to see everyone. To try to minimize some of that stress that can come with holidays. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. 
Today, President Joe Biden announced nearly $5 billion will be designated for student debt cancellation for more than 80,000 borrowers. Biden said the money would help teachers, members of the military, nurses, and other public service workers. His announcement brings the total of debt cancellation to $132 billion for more than 3.6 million borrowers to this date. A chainsaw artist in a neighborhood in the Dallas-Fort Worth area is turning dead trees into art. Here's how. As the year comes to an end, people in the Western Heights neighborhood of Garland are ready to turn over a new leaf. There were a lot of dead trees in the neighborhood, and if we could do something about that, and uh, our office suggested trying to put in some tree sculptures. It's out with the dead, dying, and dangerous trees. Instead, they're branching into a new form of art. It started off as just something fun to do. It was just a hobby, and then um, it, it grew in popularity. Chainsaw artist Kevin Roach has partnered with the city to help residents go out on a new limb. I love it. I think it makes our yard look a heck of a lot better than it did than the dead tree stump that stood there four feet tall before. It's a sculpture that tells their personal story, the story of their family or, or someone they've, they've lost, so it's a memorial or for a pet. And now several different stories are showcased in the stumps throughout this side of town, like this turtle showing tribute to this woman's pets. I'm kind of a reptile enthusiast. We've got two lizards, and so I said, great, a turtle. And people who live here? We have people stop all hours of the day and night just stop to come and take pictures of the turtle. I think it's such a great idea. It's just beautiful work. Are rooting for more. I would love to have one in my front yard, but I don't have any trees. <laughs> And since this project began, people have been rooting for more of these stump sculptures in their neighborhoods. Now here's a look at some of the top headlines you can find in the Quero record. DPS trooper Ruben Garcia of Yorktown received a service award from Governor Greg Abbott. And the South Texas Regional Job Fair will be on January 11th at the Quero Clubhouse. And Hunt Elementary students collect over 500 cans of food for the Camel House. You can read these stories and more at thequerorecord.com. Well, good afternoon, everybody. We're at 64 degrees. Another terrific day. It was absolutely gorgeous out there. Our high was exactly where we're supposed to be this time of year, 69, and we topped out at 69. Tomorrow we'll be in the 70s, and then we might uh, be in the upper 70s by uh, Friday. However, you'll be looking for the winter coat by the time we get to Sunday, and we'll have all that coming up in just a moment. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I'm sure you noticed that it was just spectacular out there today. You know, nice and comfortable with lots of sunshine. And we've got some high level cloud cover rolling through, but this is not really going to obscure the sun for tomorrow or even on Friday. We actually have a 
pretty good looking streak, maybe five days of, of dry and comfortable weather. And courtesy of the big high pressure, yes sir, that is uh, giving us uh, the nice uh, northerly, northeasterly winds, also protecting us from any kind of stormy weather coming in our direction. Problem is that thing's gonna move and that's gonna allow that big storm on the west coast to be a factor in our weather. Now this is future tracker, so this is what's going to happen I don't know if you've heard it, folks. I don't know if you have a family in Oregon or Washington. They've already had five to eight inches of rain. They're going to be getting another five to ten inches of rain. And this is going to be a three-strike deal. This, we're back to where we were last year when they were getting hammered by storm after storm after storm. Well, this is number one. This one's coming through, and this one's going to be the big snowmaker for much of the western states, and then it breaks out into the plains. And while we're moving this one on shore, what's that? It's number two coming on shore with another day of uh, 50, 60 mile an hour winds as they hammer onto the west coast. So we're pretty much looking at uh, the same pattern we did last year where vicious storms and with howling winds are gonna be slamming onto the west coast. There's number one, there's number two, and there's number three out in the middle of the Pacific. Now eventually that'll block, uh, it'll go over the Rockies. This high pressure is going to pull away. That's why it looks like the frontal system will make it through our region. And you can see how we're gonna get uh, some snow all the way down into the plains. Yeah, I, as far as Texas is concerned, you know, maybe something in Amarillo, but not for us. We're going to be on the dry side of things, and uh, we are getting the front, however, and that's going to knock the temperatures down. You notice how the winds are kind of east-northeast right about now. Our overnight low getting down to 48. Tomorrow we should get up to about 73, so abundant sunshine, little high cloud cover, but no major problems as far as we're concerned. If you get a chance to go out fishing, just remember the winds are going to be shifting around. They'll be out of the southeast by tomorrow, but uh, so far so good. The bay waters are are on the smooth side for tomorrow in Port Lavaca. We start off at 56, get up to 71. We're going to call it partly cloudy, but you know, there's plenty of sun there. And with comfortable weather in Cuero, they're getting up to 72 with just a little bit of cloud cover developing. So how many more days do we have? Well, you have Thursday and Friday. That's it. We get to get your decorations up real quick because on Saturday, we're going to have a very strong uh, southwest wind, which is going to be breezy. Then the front comes through, <coughs> pardon me, middle of the day. Then by Saturday night, we get a very strong northerly wind that's going to put us on the chilly side. Looking for a 60 on Sunday and down to 38 on Monday, and it stays on the cold side. That is your seven day forecast, reminding everybody we do have a QR code. We'd love for you to scan that and put Crossroads today on your phone. And now we'll throw it back to Karina. Thank you, Mac. Now, coming up next on 25 News Now at 5, we'll take a look at your stocks. Plus, in the sign of a cooling economy, the number of job openings across the country has dropped.
taking a look at your stocks, the Dow down 70 points, the S&P 500 down 18 points, and the Nasdaq down 83 points. Oil down $2.94, closing at $69.38 a barrel. The number of job openings across the U.S. has fallen to its lowest level since the spring of 2021. The Labor Department says employers had a little over 8.7 million jobs available at the end of October. But that's still more than one job for every single unemployed person in the country. Now, ERCOT plans to prepare the state better for extreme winter weather has failed to take off this fall after a failed attempt to get more power online. You can read the Texas Tribune article on our website, CrossroadsToday.com. And stay with us. We'll take one last look at your forecast, plus a couple from the Crossroads was named as winners of the Young Farmer and Rancher Award. Plus, here's a look at World News Tonight right after 25 News Now at 5. Coming up tonight, we're tracking breaking news right now. The shooting on campus in Las Vegas, multiple victims, police surrounding the suspect who is now dead. The image is coming in now. Also, the killing spree in Texas, multiple locations, several dead. And the flooding emergency tonight, rescuing family members by helicopter. We're next. Cassidy and Haley Hayes of Calhoun County were named the winners of the Texas Farm Bureau's Outstanding Young Farmer and Rancher Award at the organization's meeting in Frisco. The couple grows corn, cotton, and soybeans in Calhoun and Victoria counties. The Hayes also sell about 850 show pigs each year to the youth exhibitors from California to wow. Georgia. And the Hayes will receive a $60,000 award for their achievements. 850 pigs. <laughs> That's a Point lot blanks. of, uh, well, they must have what they call really good genetics mm -hmm. because if the demand for their pigs are all over the country, 
that means they're winners. Oh, yeah. So they're blue ribbon winners all over the country. $60,000 so, award winners. Yeah. So congratulations, congratulations to them. Congratulations to you guys. Think of all the generations of young farmers they've they've helped out with little pigs, mm -hmm. so little exactly. pigheads. So congratulations now, to them. That's right. Now, Mac, moving on to this weather, yeah. you're telling us you're betting no freezing weather until Christmas. Yes. Uh, I, I said it yesterday, I'll say it again. Okay. Uh, between now and Christmas, I don't see 32 degrees here in the crossroads. Ooh. So I don't think we'll be at freezing. Now, we may have some upper 30s in the next couple of days uh, over the early part, but uh, that doesn't mean it's, it's going to freeze. All I'm saying is that the jet stream, well, there's reasons for it. But uh, for tomorrow, we'll be back into the 70s. Looks good on Friday. Saturday night, the cold north wind blows in, and then we'll be only in the low 60s for the early part of next week. And yes, I mentioned a couple of upper 30s. The storm system that's coming, the front for us, uh, will be a much bigger deal in the central plains. In fact, that thing may even bring a little snow up to Amarillo. Of course, that's 800 miles from here, uh, or 1,000. It's a long way to Amarillo. Uh, Amarillo by morning. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> you got taken away there. Couldn't help it. It's all right. <laughs> back to you. All righty, Mac. Thank you, and thank you for being with us. We hope to see you back here tonight for 25 News Now at 6. World News Tonight with David Muir is up next.